Interesting. We finally did it. Look at this. We made this bad boy. This bad boy made it. Printed. We have so many failures. This one was okay. It's pretty bad. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's uh let's take this back a bit. What are you doing now? I'm are you removing the solder? As much of the solder as I can. This isn't even the first time Ben almost set his hair on fire. I can't even remember why we went to the supermarket. Wow, I enjoy watching myself pour toxic chemicals as much as the next guy. Let's uh, let, let's speed this up a bit. Oh yeah, give this some nice lube right there. I mean, this is I think for packs. So you're probably wondering, why am I eating this sad double bacon cheeseburger from McDonald's on a Tuesday night? Or more realistically, you're wondering what this 600 pound hunk of junk is that leaks all over the floor. I guess I'll just start from the beginning. A place where all great beginnings begin. The internet. Like a young, healthy adult male, I browse the internet in my free time. Yes, that's right. I browse online auction sites for stuff I don't need and can't afford. Well, if you must know, one day I was browsing the website for Trio, which is like a forum for camera hoarders. I'm scrolling through it, and I see the word free. Now, I don't know if you know this, but free is free. To make matters worse, the post says... If no one comes to get this, I will have to trash it. So basically at this point, I have to pick it up. But what exactly am I picking up here? After some Googling, I was able to pull up the service manual, or at least part of it. And according to the intro, it says that this machine can process 580 8x10 black and white film prints per hour. That's stupidly fast. Why do I need this? Again, I don't. I just want it. Luckily, my friend Ben is also a hoarder, so we borrowed his dad's pickup truck and picked it up. It was a total disaster, but we got it from three states away and got it up the stairs in only about 12 hours. And yet the suffering had only just begun. Now that we had the printer, we needed to figure out how to use it. And no, it's not this type of printer. Before we continue, I need to briefly explain how we can make full-size prints from black and white film negatives. In my last video, I go over how 35mm black and white film works. If you don't know how it works, I highly recommend watching that before you get to this next part. In order to make large prints from a tiny 35mm film negative, we need to do something called enlargement, which isn't the type you buy pills for. All enlargement is, is projecting the negative onto another strip of sensitized photographic film, in this case coated on a piece of large paper. When you develop that, a negative of a negative becomes a positive. The processor is supposed to do the development part of the exposed large piece of paper, meaning that we still need an enlarger, which is the device that projects the negative image onto the negative acting piece of paper. After we acquired the processor, Ben and I managed to find this enlarger in the middle of Connecticut for a good deal, which also included other things such as this timer and the filters. The guy really helped us out. We grabbed some five guys and decided it was time to test this out. To make sure we had this important part of the process working, we loaded up the carrier with a example film strip and put it into the enlarger. We turned off the lights, turned on the enlarger, and lo and behold, we have an image. Now that we had the enlarger working, we just needed to get the processor working. And that shouldn't be a challenge, right? Connecting it to the kitchen was the first step. We spent the next several weeks just trying to get the plumbing done. And it was a grand old time. See, this one's a chrome-plated nipple. Huh? Alright, Ben, we did it. We got some equipment. Now off to... Walmart. Off to Walmart? You're quite the man. That's hard to find, you know? I mean, it's a very standard door frame that we didn't measure. After a long day, we thought we got everything we needed, but life can be funny. We're coming to the realization we've installed two completely different nipples. Barbs. Barbs. Also, there's solder, like, dripping out of this. At that point, we figured it was time for some Chinese food and to call it a day. It'd be nice to know why we were wiring this up in the first place. Let's take a look at our handy dandy half of a surface manual. I figured the best way to show this is by me uh, sprucing up the surface manual a bit and adding in some visuals. 
This blank square over here will represent the paper negative before it's developed, and Barry B. Benson will represent the paper once an image has formed. The paper negative, now that it's been exposed, begins its journey by heading into the developer bath. At this point, this is where the image is actually formed. Once it completes its journey through the developer bath, we now have Barry B. Benson, as in the image. But there's still more steps that have to be done. The paper now makes its way into the fixed bath, and the fixed bath removes any leftover silver halide. Once it makes it through this bath, it ends up in the wash bath, and this is why we need the plumbing. We need constant fresh water cleaning the paper, getting rid of any leftover chemical residue. Finally, it heads into the dryer to dry off this soaked piece of paper. And behold, within 60 seconds, out pops a fresh print of Barry B. Benson. You will see this in action in a little bit, or the parts where it burns paper, but first we need to get the machine fully running. I'll skip ahead to the part where we finish the plumbing, but that wasn't without going to Home Depot many, many times. Yeah, what is the difference between these two? Now we have the plumbing all set up and over a gallon per minute of fresh, correct temperature filtered water flowing through the machine, it was time to get the power set up and hope that there was nothing wrong with the electronics. This processor came with the most janky electrical setup I've ever seen. When we got it, it had no power cable at all. So the first thing we did was how to figure out the voltage it took, which, surprise, surprise, it does not take the standard. Instead, it needed a beefy cable to connect to a dryer port, which runs on 240 volts. That is much more deadly. On top of this brilliant switch that it came with, it also connects to this even jankier transformer to step it down to 220. We then had to connect this to the actual processor and pray to God we didn't die when we turned it on. Also, another great fact is that we had to ground this machine so we didn't get electrocuted, and the only way to do it was by connecting it to the cold water pipe. I'm sure the place won't burn down from this. Somehow, it worked. I was gonna say, I was just gonna just Moving. make it do that, but it's doing it on its own. It looks nice and lubed up now. At this point, all we had to do now was completely convert Ben's kitchen into a dark room and also get the chemicals all set up. So our first step is, let's get this. Our first step is install some curtains because this room is very bright. The processor has to be in a completely dark room because the paper is still sensitive until it's completely developed. All right, updated progress. We got one in and we can see street lights through it. So not very good. Ben is installing the other one out of sight maybe? I'm not really sure. Luckily, the black and white paper is not sensitive to red light, so we installed some red lights into his kitchen, and with all the curtains set up and duct taped and drilled and all the above, the room was pitch black. We ate some food, and it was time to make a print. Lucky for us, Ilford still makes the chemicals for this machine over 40 years later. They weigh much more than they look. We had to mix over 20 liters of developer and over 10 liters of fix. This? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say you need to rinse that, Chief. Oh. Oh, is it bad? Yep. <laughs> How much? You can't even. Uh, you can't even tell. It just looks like water in the right one, which makes sense. But all right, we start by turning the water supply on. Our hot and cold water mix is already preset from the last time we did it to make one liter of flow at 25-ish degrees Celsius. So we'll start by bypassing the solenoid right here in order to flow water through the system to get the water up to temp and get the water in the bath up to temp already. The next thing we'll do is we will plug the machine in so we first start by verifying the disconnect is off and the machine itself is on the zero position, which is off. We can then plug the plug into the dryer vent or the dryer outlet, flip the disconnect to the on position and turn the machine to standby mode, which is one. That'll start preheating the solution of the dev and the fix. And uh, then once that's up to temp, this wait light will turn off and the machine will beep at us. At long last, here is the processor working. Obviously we are in the light here, so we are pushing a paper through it that has already been developed, but this is exactly how it would go. Down she goes. Oh, it's down there. See it coming up now. 
going into the fix. Oh, yeah, there it is, squeegeed. Oh, there it is in the next phase. If it even survived, this thing's been through like 10 times. Oh, there it comes out again. Into the wash. Get ready to catch it. Oh, yeah. it's coming out the squeegee right now. Still in the squeegee. Is it coming out? Yeah. Oh boy, well, pretend that was real. I cut out many hours of failed attempts, including burning the paper on multiple occasions, as well as moldy rollers from when we left it sitting in the water too long. But yes, it works, and here are a few print examples that I've scanned. For now, once a week, Ben and I continue to make prints of all of our black and white negatives from over the years. Our setup and the processor can do up to 20 inches wide of paper, so we intend to do a bunch of different sizes and shapes, see what this thing can handle. Once the chemicals are no longer good, we hope to convert this to RA4, which means we could then develop color photos. But that's a project for another time. At the end of the day, I don't really know why we did this. It was stupid. <laughs> Will I ever do something like this again? I doubt it. <laughs>